Good morning, I'm Brett and welcome to my backyard. Today I want to show y'all one of my favorite trees I have in the yard. It's this lovely crepe myrtle here. I love these trees because they are perfect for our area here in East Texas. They are very hot resilient. In fact, they don't really get going until it gets to be that hot time of the year. They tend to bloom starting around June or July and come into full color. Very beautiful trees. Uh, very drought tolerant. They don't take a lot of care or water. And they're also good because they're not very invasive. In fact, you could plant these trees as close as eight to 10 feet away from your house and not have to worry about the roots getting in and messing things up. Uh, they also tend to grow towards the light and away from a structure. So in case you've got them planted near a fence like I do here or against your house, uh, they, will, they will grow away from there as well. They don't try to get in and mess everything up. Now the crepe myrtles here, they can come in all sorts of sizes. Uh, they can start as low as some of the shrubs, only about two feet tall, and go all the way up to about 30 feet. Now this one here, we're probably about 18 or 20 feet. Good one established, been here about 12 years, I think. And uh, these things are great because they can grow about two feet a year, making them a very fast growing tree. It'll take usually five to 10 years to get full height of your crepe myrtle uh, depending on which variety you get. Now, some things I want to show you, since we're here at the end of January, we want to get this tree cleaned up a little bit. Uh, as you can probably tell, I've not paid much attention to it the last couple of years, except getting some of the lower things where I can walk under it here. But besides that, I haven't done a lot of cleanup on this tree. Uh, first thing we want to uh, mention here common misconception about crepe myrtles is uh, deadheading them off. You see this around, a lot of landscapers do this. I think it's uh, just for the ease for them and the trimming. It is not a good idea for the crepe myrtle. In fact, they call it crepe murder in a lot of your gardening groups. And I would only suggest that if it's a uh, space issue. If you've got something here that the, the height of the tree may be getting into, a uh, power line or something like that, you may want to keep it trimmed back. But in that case, I would also suggest finding a variety that grows to the height requirement of the area you're looking to put it in. Now, the other major issue that we want to talk about is these suckers here. A good crepe myrtle only has about three or five good stalks to it. What tends to happen is you get a lot of these suckers here coming off of it and we want to make sure that we clip all of these I'm going to get that a little bit lower later but we want to go all the way down as low as we can to the soil they tend to sucker off from the root system down there and they take a lot of the nutrients away from the tree um, to produce these suckers but they also make the tree messy and inhibit some of the light coming into the inside of the tree, which will prevent uh, your flower growth from being as full as well. And in fact, the, the less stalks you have that go up, the larger your flowers that you will have. The other main component that we wanna look at on this is rubbing. Anything on your trees, you can see how this is crossing and rubbing. We wanna make sure and take that off as well now I'm going to take that all the way back over to the main chute over here in a minute. But we want to keep it from rubbing. That can damage the branches here. You'll notice some spots. You may be able to see right here where I've got this branch coming across. It's been rubbing for many years here and in fact has grown together with the branch. Doing some damage on the main stalk here of the tree. Now, when we're pruning, we also want to remember that on any tree, as you can see this little stalk right here, we don't want to have a flat cut. If you have a flat cut, when the tree tries to heal itself, you can have some damage. I've got a plum tree I may show you all in a couple of days where it had had a couple of flat cuts. And what happened when that old limb that was coming out starts to die back before this growth ring can grow around it, makes it very susceptible to diseases and insects. And I've got some wood-borne bees that are 
boring some holes in there, doing quite a bit of damage. So when we do any cuts on our tree, we want to remember to leave that little nub, that growth ring right there, not too far out. We don't want to come all the way out here leaving too much stock because you'll get some dieback from there. But we want to cut it just past that growth ring. Good flat for that growth ring. That way, hopefully the tree will start to grow over that as the stock becomes thicker and seal that up from any infections. And if you do these points here, you'll have a very lovely blooming tree. They usually bloom about 90 to 120 days out of the year, all summer long. And a very, very hardy tree, like I said. In fact, even with low water, these things, sometimes they feel like they make their own rain clouds when you're standing underneath them. Very great tree to have in your yard. If you have any more questions about this or any other gardening tips, be sure and like and subscribe and send me a comment below. Hope y'all have a good afternoon.